What's up guys, Iggy here again with Paltech. Got an interesting build for you today. This is gonna be another first for the channel. Uh, the last episode you saw was the Holosun PID. This episode is the Holosun PID Plus. Now, when you're in the holster making business, you have to block everything out. And the PID Plus and the PID are just probably the worst damn flashlights that you can get for foam pressing. It's going to be a lot easier on vacuum, which you saw in the last one with the 220-226 on the PID. Uh, sadly, this is the PID Plus, which is about a half inch longer or so and completely different dimensions. The bottom of the PID Plus is more square, where the other one is a little bit rounded on the edge and has a little bit of an angle. That being said, I had to spend yesterday and take some water weld and some tape and pretty much fill in the areas and then stick it under the heat to uh, cure it a little bit quicker. And this is what I have. So these are flat on each side. I left enough room so I could still be able to articulate the uh, mounting and get it on and off the molds and whatnot, but I still have to block it for uh, what we're doing. So I'm gonna have to figure out something on that aspect. Uh, but we have an order for a Glock 17 with PID Plus, and this is gonna be luckily just a simple uh, QLS 4 in FDE fall, and it's going all the way out to California again. So uh, we're going to go ahead and block this. Luckily, the same blocking that I use for the um, TLR-8 or TLR-7, it's just wide enough to do everything we need right there. So we're going to be able to use this blocking that we made uh, to knock it out, but we have to pay special attention to this right here. So while it's pouring outside, while the dogs are sleeping, while I am full from lunch, let's knock this out and get it out the door and move on to the next one because I am eager to finish 2023's orders. And yes, that sounds terrible, but holy crap, you guys order a lot. So it's a blessing and a curse. I appreciate all you and I really appreciate the patience. So thank you for that. So let's let's get this going. This I'm looking forward to because it's it's a challenge. Let's do it. So obviously I went ahead and I did the side channel and I put on the five layers of tape because, well, let's just face it, that's boring. So uh, we got everything all set up, ready to go. I did find these thin pieces of PCB board and I'm going to go ahead and mount those up. So you can start on whatever side you want. I'm probably just going to see here, start right here myself. Yeah, it doesn't have to be that far. That looks pretty good. I'm just going to go slightly lower this is a very old um, DIY uh, mold <laughs> and uh, I don't even know if they make molds anymore I'm pretty sure DIY is gone so but there's one side and this side we're not going to do it the same orientation because our retention is going to be right there so we're going to flip it and just leave enough to be indented right there. And we can always work a little bit out later on. So we'll go ahead and do that. Now this has no hood. Thank the Lord. And we'll get that all beautified. And I like to hold it until it gets down on the other side. Push down and then pull the tape up so it's nice and tight. And get it on there and press it down. And I'll always tape right here. Make sure both of these are lined up, as in parallel, right here. All right, and that's pretty much good to go right there. Now, this side we're going to have to block a little bit. As you can see, I already cut it to fit right in there. So that is going to get blocked right there. And then this side 
it's going to go right there. And again, the reason being is so that the screw and the rest of those indentations don't mess with your retention. Because otherwise you'll have like a cheese grater effect when you're trying to pull it. You know, you're just going to have retention, retention, retention. It's just going to come out like... And you don't, you don't want that. And I'm going to just cover the bottom. Do a couple couple layers on it and this gives it a little extra room to slide on is it needed no but I have found in the past that it does it does help a little bit and with being a brand new flashlight to the shop I like to see I like to see what it does Right, and then let's I'm just gonna throw that there so it's along the side. Beauteous. Now this does have the QLS setup, so we'll go ahead and grab a QLS fork. So we can actually do. Uh, either one of these. This is uh, they're both the QLS. This one is more of a universal Fits the combat loops. This one's QLS. So we're gonna go with the QLS And that's gonna go right here. So all that is fine. We're just gonna have to block we'll Throw that right there and we'll have to put something underneath that so it doesn't fold over on us Because I'm not the biggest fan. Let's see how, how big is that? Oh, look at that. Throw that right there. Oh, it's like a thing of beauty. So throw that right there. Again, the reason why I do long pieces of blocking is that adds strength to everything you do. It's like when you bead roll uh, sheet metal for your cars or anything like that, the extra peak and valley is what makes it And there we are right there. Next, all I gotta do is make a retention plate out of quarter inch MDF. And then we are ready for the press. And if you couldn't hear the clicking in the background, the presses are on and the foam is nice and hot, hot foam. Look at that, I can almost touch my fingers through the foam. That's exactly what you want because the, not necessarily the hotter it is, but the more uniform in uh, heat, on the foam itself, the better you're gonna squish and then the better um, outcome you're gonna have. So again, these have been in here for probably 25 minutes, half an hour. And like I said, they are all up to temp. So I'm gonna cut that MDF. I'm gonna cut the piece of uh, FDE in fall, which I believe is the darker one. I'd have to look at it. And then um, throw it in the press. That's all we can do. And it's that time we are in the press. Bada bing, look at that squish. This is going to come out Munta Bella. Mwah. We shall see. I had so much pressure on that press, it turned the holster a different color. All right, I'm just kidding. This is a pink uh, Glock 48 MOS I did with a uh, uh, molded and wedge. That's that's going out. I did that while it was cooling. So now that that can go out, put it in the pin. Uh, this is the actual rig. So as you see, PID, oh, that came out good. Same thing right there. 
can't, you can only see the line from the blocking that I put on top of it, which is exactly what I was going for because there's no other way around it because there's so many dimples to do. So the few minutes I did of um, water weld, which this is it right here. It's just uh, JB's water weld. And um, huh, so let's go ahead, let's cut this up, buff it out, and uh, let's hope that retention is on point. I think it's going to be good because there is a nice dimple boop, right there. So let's, um, I'm going to cut it out. Let's get it to that point and let's see how well this is going to fit. I think judging by this, it's going to look good. So we'll see. Here we are all marked up of how it's going to look. I've got three hole here. I'm going to have to drill that, drill these and I'm going to cut out real quick. We know it's boring, but it is part of the process. And honestly, I think this is going to look pretty, pretty good. I'm digging it. And with a little bit of movie magic and forgetting to hit record on uh, some steps, uh, here we go. Here is the uh, Glock 17 with uh, the PID. So uh, I went ahead, cleaned it up. Obviously, I drilled the holes. I cut it out. I shaped it to everywhere we need to be. Um, so but we are going to test it out. I've already swapped the light over to uh, the blue gun. So let's see how the retention is going to be. But first, I'm going to do go ahead and install... A half inch so this is a half inch post with a half inch rubber spacer and these are factory supplied screws right here from uh safari land so let's see here and these are three eighths i believe Right, and then these ones are half inch. So we're just gonna check out to see what the retention is. So I feel like if I go like I normally do, it's gonna be too tight. I'm gonna put these half inch screws flush with the bottom. So now, uh, obviously there's a gap right here. So I have a feeling there's gonna be a little bit of um, like retention bump, like we were talking about before between these two, but it is blocked for it but that gap will hit right here. So we'll see how it is. Oh, it snapped in good. See, but right there, yeah, so it's hanging up right here. But there's still a little play, so I'm thinking, thinking it can be adjusted. Like that. I'm gonna have to play with this a little bit. figure this out maybe that's the reason why they have that open right there is for that part but let's figure it out well looking at it and a little bit of heat gun time we got it to work so what i did is i removed everything from the flashlight on the back side that's going to be behind the qls fork and i heated up just a little bit on the uh the holster and pressed in right here so that leaves a retention point like that right on the holster so we got that right there so pull and of course it's still adjustable and it's doing pretty good and you still got click coming out and it's pretty firm going in with the uh options still having the adjustability so i'm thinking this is a win so in the future what i'm going to do because this is the very first one so we are both learning when uh i block this right here i'm going to leave an opening for the very front for the uh, foam or the kydex to sink in from the foam. So that will be perfect right there. So now the only thing we have left to do on this is install the QLS fork. So let's do that. And pretty, pretty simple. Line up your three holes, get the screws going, position the cant, and then tighten. And there we are right there. So here is uh, outside the waistband, which I got to clean now, for the 17 with PID plus. All right, I must say I am happy with the way this came out. Came out awesome. Honestly, it feels good. Right, and the pull 
just as good as well. Um, I like it. Honestly, I do love the PID. I am going to be offering a lot more rigs with the PID Plus coming up with uh, certain things that you're going to see in the near future. So that's going to be a video for another time. But thank you guys for joining me on this journey. I, like again, absolutely love this. And it's heading out to Santa Ana, California. So um, I am uh, happy this is finally done. And I am now moving on to the next one. I only have a handful left um, to just keep trucking through. And then January is looking like it's going to be pretty quick to run through that. So anyways, um, I'm going to go ahead and just keep on trucking. It's pouring. It's going to be raining for the next few days. I have a gun show that I'm prepping for uh, tomorrow for a couple hours. So the later I work tonight, the more I'll, I'll get done for other orders. Uh, but gun show tomorrow this weekend in Wisconsin, Maine. I'm going to be up there and uh, hopefully selling lots of holsters. And I get to meet some of you guys, which is pretty cool. I do have some people come and meet me at these shows. And it's uh, pretty cool to um, to meet everybody out there that watches these videos. So, uh, you know, appreciate you guys for that. Huge shout out to Holstersmith and KnifeKits.com. I use a lot of what they provide on their website. Feel free to hit them up. Tell them I sent you if you need anything for your holster business. Uh, on that note, I will leave you guys at that. I'm going to move on to the next stuff. And I will see you on the next one.